Welcome to Roleplay Rehash. Hey. Uh, it's, <laughs> every, I'm, every time I do this, Gen C, you're always like, oh, Ben's saying hello to me. <laughs> I, I just get so happy. <laughs> I thought It's actually no, very just... heartwarming. Um, but hey, welcome <laughs> welcome to Roleplay Rehash. Hello. Uh, it's a, sort of a rap party episode where we talk, we're going to talk about Twilight, Twilight and how our version looks next to it. Um, I have, I think, a, I think the big question I want to ask. Yes. Of me, of the world. Actually, of the viewers, I think I have two. I, I think I have two big questions, and I, I think the first I want to <laughs> ask you and Haley, Jensen and Haley. Yes, Haley and yes. Like what? What does Twilight like mean to you? This is such a good question. That is a good question. Yeah, too bad I didn't like ask you this earlier, so you could prepare an right. answer. It's a huh? hard question. Well, um, it it is a it is a hard question. So for me personally, le- can I tell my Twilight story? Mm-hmm. Okay, so one day, like, oh God, how old were we? Twenty-seven, like sixteen. So like twelve years ago, it was not. I think it was twenty-seven. That was only a year. That ago was for sixteen us. when it first came out. Like the yeah, or when we first started reading the books. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So like twelve years ago, Haley was like, "Okay, Gen Z, I've got this amazing book that I just read, and it is so good, and you have to read it." So she let me borrow it, and I stayed home sick from school one day, and I read the whole fucking thing, and I would loved it so much. I loved it so much, and I was so excited to tell Haley about it, and then we talked about it, and then we went and saw the first movie together, and so it was like a friendship thing. I did that with uh. Holes, the book Holes. Oh, oh nice. yeah, th- I read that in one day. I loved that book, so nice. I get that. I know what it's like to love a book that much. Yeah. Oh, we also got we got matching Team Edward shirts because we were Team Edward at the time. We are no longer Team Edward, dear listeners. Do not fret. Um, can I talk about? I've been like kind of waiting to tell this a little bit that like Twilight is actually kind of. Uh, I know very little about it. As I've only ever okay. seen the first movie and like read half of the first book. Um, but it actually was a really important part of my life because uh, the first time I ever heard about it was when the movie came out. I'd mm-hmm. never heard of it before then. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really like bothered me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was like a really, it, it, it was in college when it was like my first year in college when uh, the movie came out. Um, and so, I, I kind of had my first mo- moment as like an adult man where it, I, I kind of started researching this and I, and I kind of understood that like the large audience for this was like women and girls, you know? Um, and I was like, how did I miss like 2 million women reading this book? Like how, <laughs> how am I, am I, am I not paying attention <laughs> to like women and girls? Am I not like, well, it's kind of hard to be in the theater with them at the same time. <laughs> well, well, but at this point, at this point it, it had just been a book and they were like announcing the movie. Um, and so I was like, that was kind of a big awakening moment for me where I was like, I think I might not be paying attention to women. Um, so that, that's what it, it kind of means to me. So it was, it was kind of a big deal for me in that, in that sense. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, nice. so for me, when I when I decided that I wanted to do Twilight, so Twilight has gotten kind of a like a renaissance, like a like a. A lot of people have been going back to Twilight within the past year or two, to um, really look at how we reacted to it as a society, and really looking at it critically and looking at not just like the book and the movie itself critically, but also our perceptions of the book and the movies and our receptions of the people who enjoy those things. And, like, I'll admit, you know, back in the day, I had a little bit of a a period of, like, denial and shame. Mm -hmm. Because there was, like, as soon as it became super-duper popular, everyone really, really turned on it and turned on people who liked it. So I had to deny ever liking it. Which was stupid, sucks, yeah. but you fucking know, high school you know, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Like you know, you you do crazy shit in high school. You did, <laughs> but like I legitimately loved the, especially the first book. I think was I really liked it. Haley, would you like to talk about your experience? Yeah. So with Twilight, it was maybe a coming of age 
Um, or at least, uh, unfortunately, because I was Team Edward for a time, it was maybe like yeah. another <laughs> fictional character that I could like that was not the Prince of Saiyans. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't give all of your love yeah. to Goku. Well, that would be Vegeta, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say this. Oh, Vegeta. <laughs> yeah, um, but okay, the one thing I really, really remember is that... I had to Google the word masochist, and I didn't know how to delete that from Google, and my mom saw it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my mom was like, what the oh fuck, Haley? <laughs> Why are you Googling masochist? And I'm like, ah. I was like, mom, you read the book, too. <laughs> uh, I love Angie so much. She went with she us. She did. Because, of course, she did. Of course, did. she did. <laughs> But that's like the main thing I remember is that I had to Google masochist and she got on to me about it. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Alex. Hi. Do you, do you have do you have a Twilight story? So my <laughs> Twilight story is I went over to this this crazy person's house. Um, oh, hey now. And I went there with a, with a buddy of mine and my wife. <laughs> God damn it, Alex! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you know, you know, you're so good at that leveled tone. And like, mm-hmm. while you were like, my Twilight story is, I was like, this is either going to be real <laughs> or he's just going to roast us for making him watch this movie. No, y'all. As soon as he said I went over to this crazy person's house, I was like, he's talking about me. I know he's that's talking it. About me. Yeah, no, that was that was the first time I watched Twilight. Um, Oh. Was in preparation for this for this uh, fandango. So that's my Twilight story. So my next big question, the other big question I have, is: Did we do better than the movie? Um, either one. I want to. I want to know the answer. If the answer is different for either for the book and the movie, I want to know. I would like to answer this one last. I, I actually have a question. Uh, okay. Okay. It's it's from my wife, and uh, oh, she wanted Jamie. to know. Let me pull it up in my phone here. Mike. His name was Mike. His name was Michael. Um. No. Uh. He. He. Uh. She <laughs> asked about uh, a. Your interpretation of Jacob in our rehash, was he just a regular dude or did he have like any kind of werewolfism going on with him or just <laughs> like canthropy? Yeah, lycanthropy. Okay. <laughs> she was just very curious about that. Lycanthroped. Um, yeah, so uh, I purposefully uh, for my series deleted the werewolf aspect from it. Mm-hmm. So he's just regular kid. Uh, the reason that I did that, like, I, you know, I think the, the werewolf stuff was really great and everything, but first of all, <laughs> I, I don't want to be that guy and be like, it was a little racist, but it was a little racist. It was a little racist. Okay, I'm sorry, I but think it was, we have it was a little a, racist. I think we have a submission later that agrees with you, at least we one. Do. Yeah. And, and I just, and I just didn't want, I just didn't want to deal with that, first of all, and then... Um, also, I felt like for our series as, I just didn't, I just didn't want to go that route with like the werewolves and the vampires fighting. I really wanted to focus on the people and the vampires fighting. And I thought that having more mythical creatures and more conflict like that would kind of muddy the waters Mm -hmm. in our short series. So I just thought it would make it more simple and also less racist if I, if I didn't include (laughs) the werewolf aspect. So. So, I no, he that. was just yeah. a normal guy. As a person who's only seen the first movie and read half the first book, I don't know if he's doing a half. I got the part where she Googled if he was a vampire. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is the best. <laughs> My favorite part is it says she opened her favorite search engine. Like, it's Google. Mm-hmm. Everyone's is Google. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Um, no, maybe I also back love in the day, she, maybe she was using Ask Jeeves. You don't perhaps, know. Perhaps I have to remember that this it, was literally it could be, four it million could be, years ago. It could be Bing. Who, who knows? It was not Bing because that <laughs> did not exist then. Because, Shut up, Ben. Again, it was four My million dreams. years ago. Um, yeah, right. But like as a person, I think that's like to me the major flaw of the first installment of Twilight, not the Twilight Saga. But Twilight is so built like 
the first book in a series. And it really feels like to me the whole time it's telling you this will be important later. Yeah. Uh, and it's like it's very muddied in that sense. Like I'm mm -hmm. sure that all those like sibling characters become important later, but they sure weren't in the first book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except for the one psychic lady, the one Jean Grey lady. She was she was cool. Um, I wonder, I, I kind of felt like, like I felt it though, Haley, when you just like, in a moment, deleted all of them. <laughs> like I wonder yeah. if like all the Twilight fans in the world like staggered a little and clutched their chest like Obi-Wan feeling like Alderaan explode. <laughs> <laughs> the entire Cullen no, I mean, family in, in, in like an RPG like a short RPG campaign like I yeah, don't know I think it's to. fine to just not have that many characters you know word so Haley what do you think did we do better did we improve this I think we definitely did um, <sighs> definitely with the movie because I mean the movie even for the diehard fans the movies were just such a letdown the the casting, the the directing, the cinematography, I feel like all of it was a huge letdown for what we built up as as far as the the ones of us that actually read the books and may oh well, and maybe even the ones that did not read the books um as uh, for for the books um i I don't know much else about Stephanie Meyer. I know that she's uh, written two other novels one is called the host um the other one i can't remember the name of it but it's something about a cia woman so i can't really say much about stephanie meyer other than her writing seemed a little elementary i don't i really don't want to compare <laughs> it to this but i will because Twilight was one of those where everyone could read it. It was also like Fifty Shades mm -hmm. of Grey where everyone could read it <laughs> and kind of mm -hmm. put themselves into it. <laughs> uh, two things Two things on writing. Um, one thing, from what I read of the first book, she has a lot of something called filtering, which is bad in writing. Uh, it's when you say, like, a character, like, could feel the weight of the baseball in their hand. But when you really should say the baseball was heavy in their hand. And so she does that a lot. Um, but um, to her credit, um, there's this thing, there's this thing uh, called the art of fiction. Uh, it's a book called the art of fiction. It was written in the eighties. Um, and it, it talks about like that. There's no laws for art. Um because, like, as soon as you come up with one, as soon as you come up with this rule that all arts should follow, including the thing I just said, <laughs> uh, you will find something that breaks it and works. And so art has to have its own laws that it has to abide. It makes its own laws and follows them. And that's what good art is. And to Stephanie Meyer's credit, Twilight mostly does that. Okay. Um, it mostly... Yeah. You okay? Missing in some uh, I would just like to interject. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, I have not read the last book since it came out, but I very specifically remember thinking that this is a very badly written the, book. The fourth <laughs> yeah. one was the worst one like, to get I through. Re it was. God, it, it was, was awful. It was just even awful. the audio book was so bad to get through. Like I. I I feel like she barely had complete sentences. <laughs> like, I don't mean to be sued. I'm sorry, Stephanie Meyer, but God, what were you doing with that last book? It was bad. So I probably need to interject and point out, I understand that I just called her writing elementary while also saying that I had to Google masochist. <laughs> that is not an elementary word. But I grew up in a very sheltered home, okay? Yeah, I no, I mean, her writing is elementary, even if she used a couple of big words, you know? <laughs> but but writing and story are two different things, to be fair. They um, are. And so yes. I liked us doing this thing where we were like, what if it's not a series? Um, so, mm -hmm. oh, we should address that. We have no mm -hmm. plans to continue doing this, right? Uh, no, no. No plan. I, I don't want to set anything in stone, but there's no plan, right? No, there is no plan. It, it was it was my thought to have this just like a 
take the series and then just like make one thing out of it. Yeah. You know? And I, which again is like why I, I didn't even talk about like the Volturi or the werewolves or any kind of stuff like that. You know, like I just. And I, I really, uh, I like that. I like that we did that, but I am going to be the jerk here. And I'm going to say in some key no areas, I actually think we didn't improve. Okay. Um, I liked our story as a whole a little better because, because mm-hmm. of the reasons you just said. It was much less complicated. It was exciting in some cool ways. Had a good. Our villain was way better than James. James was kind of a turd in the punch bowl. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, but honestly, the like... I know the romantic aspects in Twilight mm-hmm. are like crazy cheesy mm-hmm. and there's some like pretty dumb lines, but I, I kind of, and your the way you Haley and Alex played it was very believable, which was, okay. Cool. We talked about this before. This was really hard to do. Yeah. It, it was, was super yeah. hard. And so to a do. note I have here <laughs> is that it is difficult to improv romance. Yeah. And I think like, that's I'll be a honest. key thing. Yeah. So um, when I was thinking about doing Twilight, <laughs> I, again, like, I enjoyed reading the books because I got emotionally invested in, like, I cried the entire book, too. The entire book, too. I cried. I just laid on the couch and sobbed for hours, okay? Like, I, I got very emotionally invested in these characters and their romance and all this nonsense. And um, when I was thinking about doing Twilight, one of the things that I... <laughs> that I that I thought would be great is like this this sounds so dumb. Nope, just say I it. was like we're, we're, this se- There's nothing done. We're doing Twilight. <laughs> series, no judgment. It needs it needs more boning, okay? It needs more boning <laughs> I know. sooner. And that's why you cast Alex, I need right? Boning. You're like if anyone will do boning I'm sorry. It's, Alex. it's the guy that draws penises. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> Who's maybe drawing a penis right now? It's like I a, mean <laughs> Like a focusing mechanism. Y'all, y'all are painting a very strange picture of me. Um, you are not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just, you know, one of the things that really rubbed me the wrong way was this whole, oh my God, like what? It took them four fucking books <laughs> for boning to happen. <laughs> And like the whole idea was this this religious thing about it's a sin and we can't we've got to protect our souls and that was also the whole reason that he did that she didn't he didn't turn her into a vampire and I also thought that like turning the protagonist into a vampire sooner would have like I just I I I needed more like steaminess I I actually wanted it to be steamier but I, you can't force steaminess can't on force people. Steaminess. That would hey, be man, weird. Bella tried. You do it if you got structure. If you outline it and you plan it, it works. But I and, didn't. I and didn't you can, want to, honestly. You can improv like a side story romance, but if it's about that, it's tough. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I am sorry. I did not commit to that. No. 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 It did end up I being am, cute. Like, don't get I, me wrong. Yes, I thought it was cute. <laughs> but I felt. I can't help but feel like it it, it missed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sorry if that's a jerk thing to say about my friends whom I love, but No, that's acceptable. No, I th- I think it's a it's a valid yeah. point. Uh, it need it needed structure mm-hmm. that it didn't have. Um okay, wait. Okay though. In the original work was Edward like a 115-year-old virgin? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. And Bella That's, was uh, trying, like she was trying so hard to take his shirt off. Oh my gosh! And he was no like, no. Play Jesus Christ, every no. Yeah. Oh my god, Ben. <laughs> no, it's every language in the world. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, no, that's actually very. I guess it was probably played for sadness a little bit that he was often ostracized and had never been able to like be close to anyone. No, no, it wasn't that he hadn't been able to. Like, he hadn't, he wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. Like, it was very specific when it was talking about he, in all of his 115 years of living, had never found anyone that he was even remotely interested in. Like, they even made Rosalie as a Mm -hmm. mate for him, and he was like, no, thank you, I don't like He had offers. So many offers. Yeah, he had, the ladies were falling at his feet, and he, like, he was saving himself for his one true love, and that was Bella. Honestly? So that's kind of cute. That's kind of hot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, right? I kind of right. get it. 
I get it. It took the one person to not have any brain it's waves. Not realistic, but I think I think I think Twilight's <laughs> complete lack of realism is honestly one of its strengths. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's also some of its weaknesses, unfortunately. But um, uh, there's one other big thing that I didn't like. Um, and this will be like my last like real real mean thing to say about my own podcast. But I, I'm actually going to call you out specifically here, Alex. Yeah, uh, and 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 one of and Franz's uh, rehash submission later in the episode will uh, vindicate me. But I did not like that you just like killed the mom. Like there was no reason to do that. I thought it would make a more tragic story for Bradley. Honestly, I think the mom bits in uh, Twilight were a little weak, anyways. Um. I thought she was just there as like a plot thing to get Bella to go somewhere else, and that's that's all she was really good for, as far as the movie was. So I I feel like it's like kind of a problematic trope that happens a lot though is when that happens, the first thought is kill her, and I think that's it's it's just a weird <laughs> thing that happens kill a lot. Her. <laughs> well. No one told me a, no. We, like in Full House, they were like, "What if we made a move, a show about a guy who had three girls, and he needs some help taking care of them, and so he gets his brother and his in law and his friend to help him." I guess we need to kill the mom. <laughs> guess she needs to die horribly in a car accident before the series even begins. And like, I well, feel like I mean, that's what we did a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't have them be divorced and the mom's out in Vegas banging waiters and stuff like that because that doesn't you know give you a nice family why? atmosphere. Why can't why can't she live her best life banging waiters <laughs> out in Vegas? Because family atmosphere. That's why. Oh, in Full House, fair enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were still talking about Twilight. No, I um, guess I could have let Bradley's mom go bang. I'm, I'm sure she banged a lot of, of waiters in uh, in New York before she got the cancer. <laughs> It was it, cancer? I think so. Yeah, I, I don't even. I honestly don't even. Remember I don't remember that. either. I don't think you said. Oh my God. I don't, I don't no. think you said. I think you just killed her so you didn't have to deal with her, Alex. No, that is true. I, I didn't want to deal with her anymore. Okay. Aww. Um. Okay. I want to also. Say, also. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, what would what would be the reasoning behind Bradley going to Forks from New York? If if the mom was still alive and well, just send her on a world sex tour with her boyfriend like they did in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay, one of the things I really liked that we established in this, and this is a thing I've always, you know, everyone makes this crack about how like Edward's a <laughs> like a pedophile, <laughs> you know. Um, God, I I don't like having said that word out loud on the podcast, but um, <laughs> too late now. It's in there. But it, that it's kind of gross, right? That he's yeah. like a hundred years old and she's like sixteen. But I never, I always thought of it as how Haley played it, that he wasn't a hundred and sixteen, that he was yeah. just always seventeen, just stuck. Yeah, he was stuck. Yeah, it, in the books, I kind of feel like maybe it was like that a little bit, but in the movie, I don't know. Yeah, I, well, it's idea versus execution. Haley, what do too. you think? Oh, Edward. Do you think that he had the mind of a of an eighteen year old? Not in the movie. Uh, the way yeah, that um, he oh crap, I forgot his name. Edward Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. C Cedric Diggory. Yeah, said I almost said <laughs> that actually. <laughs> I almost said Cedric. Um, the way that he the entertainer he uh you know um portrayed him it was kind of like he was very uh more controlling and maybe he was that yeah. way because he was so freaking old <laughs> yeah i don't know he's creepy uh, in the he came off creepier in the, in what i read in the book it was a little creepy. and whatever the book he came off as a person who was bad at lying and that was amazing i actually kind of love that yeah. like he was supposed to lie but he's super bad at it <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's why they have to keep moving. In the movie, he was just like aggressive. He was like, just a like a gaslighter. He was kind of yeah, gaslighter. Yeah. yeah. In, in in the in the 
in the book, it definitely came off as he like panicked and told terrible lies. Like when he was mm-hmm. like, "Well, you kind of Superman ran across the parking lot." And he's like, "No, no, what? I was right beside <laughs> you, yeah, bitch! You dumb." Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> so I, I'm yeah. sorry. So this wasn't Robert Pattinson's fault either. It, it was the director. Oh no! Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, Rob. <laughs> call you yeah, in. Yeah, Rob Pat's just doing his he's doing his he's doing his best. No no disrespect toward him. But yeah. I, I agree with Haley. I think that in the in the movie he did not seem like he was perpetually a teenager. He seemed like an old man in a teenager's body, which was creepy. Okay. So to this point, I think doing it the other way and mm-hmm. I'm so nervous about expressing this. Doing opinion, it, doing it, do, do, doing, doing it. Doing it the mm-hmm. other way it. is a valid way to do it. Um, so I really love FLCL. I don't know how many people here have seen the anime FLCL. Fully coolly. Um, yeah. yeah. But one of like kind of the central one of the central plot elements is it's like this coming of age story where this like Ooh. 12, 13 year old boy. Um, kind of by the end of it has like fallen in love with this like 25 year old woman mm-hmm. um, and it's honestly like it was like formative for me and it gave me like a lot of feelings what they just did was they never had a relation they never like had a physical relationship they never did it you know they, I didn't mean to say did it well, that's I meant they never good. they never were a thing Um, and I think like it would have been valid to do that I think it would have been valid to just say that this like teenage person and this like hundred year old vampire fell in love, and they just like maybe at the end they just didn't end up together. But acknowledging the feelings is not a bad thing. Um, but you know, going through with it, like actually making an actionable thing is like maybe not good. But like I don't know, I think that's a valid like human story to tell. I think I think you really need to see Interview with a Vampire. I probably do. <laughs> I think I think you'd love it. Kind of should have watched it before we did this, huh? But <laughs> <sighs> wait, you like legitimately haven't seen it though, Ben? I don't even know what it's about. Are you serious right now? I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not judging. You are a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> it's it's about Brad because... Pitt, who is a vampire. It is about who Brad is. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Giving an interview to, um, Christian. Slater? Slater. Is it Slater? Okay. Yeah, Christian Slater about how much Tom Cruise is a dick. Yeah, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. So real life, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. But no, I think Ben would love it because journalism's because journalism. And it's got a uh, what's her name in it? Was great. <laughs> Kristen, uh, Kristen Dunst. Kristen Dunst. Yeah. Oh man, she was with a baby. In that she, was a, she, she was a. She was a baby. She was like she was like eight. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. She was tiny, little bit. Well, she was probably like twelve. And yeah. saying some she adult ass stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, and it had um, ooh, Antonio Banderas. Oh, was he in that? Ooh, I, f- you I are forgot about that. He was that. also you a are vampire. Definitely selling this to me. I will. Um, Movie night. Okay, another note I had was I thought it would be interesting if um. Estella? Oh wait, 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 wait! I'm so sorry. Can I can I say something about the the previous note that you? Oh had? yes, of course. Were you talking about the gender swap thing or the fact that I aged her up or him up a year? Oh yeah, that could be either either gender. Um, I I'm saying I was saying like, uh, I think it would be valid to keep it the way it was to make it like oh okay. like a 16 year old person and a hundred year old person, but they don't become 17. a couple. They have feelings oh, okay. for each other, but so oh, kind of like in Twin Peaks when like obviously like Cooper and like um shit Alex, what's that character's name? The, the lady th- with the hotel ears. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, the hotel owner's daughter. That's the one that like helps him. You know, they clearly have like a romantic thing going, but they both are kind of like this is not a good idea. Let's be friends. Um, but their like romantic tension is kind of an interesting part of the show. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting if Estella also had their own love triangle. Ooh. Uh, it was too much mm-hmm. to do in this, but like, man, yeah. what if there was like another vampire Ooh. and like, I... like just that would be so much easier. And like that being like an allure uh, yeah. Kind of in the way that, like, I mean, I know that Jacob was a werewolf, but I have to assume that comes with a lot less baggage than being with a vampire. <laughs> um, yeah, you just take care of him once a month. But, so, um, <laughs> I 
one hundred percent had that. Oh yeah. Um, I I had that thought of what if Estella also had like a love triangle thing going on? Because love triangles are fine, right? Oh, they add drama. Wouldn't that make it like a a love rhombus? Oh well, yeah, kind of, a, like kind of a W, yeah. <laughs> all the love, just spreading the love out everywhere to everyone. <clears throat> but then I thought I really liked. Uh, this is so dumb, you guys. I really liked kind of the. Um, I really liked the idea that you know this vampire had lived for so long and was just never interested in anyone and just found like the one and it just so happened to be a dang human. Thank humans. Teenager, Stupid thank know? humans. Like, I just, I don't know. I thought that was great. And, and I just didn't want to, I didn't want to touch that. Like, I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted the vampire to be, like, <clears throat> unequivocally, like, just all in on that one person. I don't know. But, yeah, I actually, I had that thought, too. That was, and I think that's a fair, you know, that's a fair, that's a fair thing. Ben. Um, Haley, were you playing Estella as an environmentalist? <laughs> I was trying with my Tesla. Was it, is it because that her lifespan is essentially the planets? So she has. To yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I like that a lot. Definitely. I like that, I like that yeah, a whole, that whole lot. That's, that's one of my, I just like those notes. She okay. was so worried about, um. The AMC pacer being such a piece of crap and getting <laughs> less than one mile to the gallon. Uh, uh, the pacemaker. I think there was a, was there, did she talk about recycling at some point? I don't remember. It could have come Maybe. up, but anyways, recycle. I don't recall. Um, <laughs> why couldn't she hear his thoughts? Uh, did they ever answer that in the original thing? In the original Twilight. Okay. They really didn't, but, like, after she became a vampire, they, they, it kind of was just, like, her power is... A force field. Shielding, a, field, a force field, like, she's got the shield, and so, like, before she was a vampire, she still had kind of, like, that power a little bit, so her mind had a force field on it. But also in the books, right? That's okay. She was not affected by some of the other super... Natural attacks by vampires. Mm -hmm. And I say not uh, some of them. Like um, sh she was still in Alice's visions. Um, she yeah. could still be calmed by um, Jasper. Jasper. But if Aro touched her, Aro couldn't read her thoughts. And there were a couple of other characters that could not affect her with her supernatural abilities. So yeah, Stephanie Meyer built that up to be her force field when she became a vampire. So it, it evolved into something pretty cool. But otherwise, to answer your question, no, they did not explain that. Why she could, why she was just like no brain waves for Edward. Um, I like that Charlie had literally eight guns in the campaign and never fired a shot. Uh, I like that we kind of, like, it's realistic that this guy would have some guns, but, like, honestly, like, the hero comes in and saves the day by shooting people is, like, not a great thing. Uh, and so it was good that we were able to balance that. Um, I had I had some problems playing a cop, honestly. Uh, yeah. I, um... I used to be, since you mentioned earlier, I don't know how much I've ever mentioned this on the podcast. I used to be like a newspaper reporter. Uh, I used to have uh, Corny's job, which, by the way, I'm so sad that <laughs> Corny was only in one episode, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to. They were a good. They were a good character. That was that was based on a lot of real life experience, and so like, I worked a lot with police and kind of ended up like really being enamored with the idea of police but me in real life having some like very real issues with the like institution of police in america um and so i kind of tried to balance that with charlie by making him kind of a flawed guy and i hope that mm -hmm. i made him a flawed guy oh he was hella flawed. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> uh to the point where I, i'm hoping people aren't just like well ben's kind of gross huh <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I like that Finch had both a classy side and a primal jagged side. Uh, that was really cool. I liked that too. <laughs> I had I had a lot of fun with Finch's character. I'm not gonna lie. I I think Finch was the best part of our thing. I thought we Aww. having uh the villain with the villains at least maybe they get better later with the Volturian stuff, but the villain element in the first Twilight is pretty weak. Um, mm. to be honest. Um, and I thought yours was cool. Thank you. Super cool. Aww. Um. What? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Alex, you and I need to talk about our like Olive Garden conversation, <laughs> where like, um, Al okay, Jincy, Alex, and I had some wild theories about what's going on. For everyone listening, we definitely we do a little bit off mic, um, as far as like just making sure we're on the same page and like making sure the series like flows well and stuff. But Alex and I and Haley and I like didn't know what was going to happen next as far as Jincy goes. Nope. Um, every once in a while, we might have done something to the effect of like saying, like, okay, where are we going to start this episode? Like, are we going to start it like in this scene? Or, um, but other than that, we didn't know what was going on. This wasn't a scripted s series. No. Um, and so Alex and I had some wild theories about what was going on, and <laughs> one of one of mine, one of ours, really, was that Edward's power, vampire power, mm -hmm. was that he was a shapeshifter, mm -hmm. and I was. Uh, purporting that Jacob was never in it, that he had just been in imitating <laughs> Jacob the whole time. Aww. Uh, and Alex, what were you? What did you say? You took it like a beat further, even. Oh, I don't. It was honestly. Madge. It was Madge. yeah. I, <clears throat> yeah, I thought oh I thought that that Madge was was uh, Edward. Yeah. Hmm. I think well. you found a part where that didn't work though, and you were like, "Oh wait, no, am I not Ben?" Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I debunked my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's where we were with that i love so much that you guys had theories yeah in the olive garden Aww. in the oh, olive I, garden when also when i said that my my current theory was that uh jacob was a vampire hunter that that was like 75 percent in earnest <laughs> oh wow. i was i didn't have a lot of like evidence for it but i he kept hanging around and kept like showing up where the vampire was and i just thought okay now listen all right so let me can i give you just some like insight into my brain and the way that i was doing things yeah so i think i think ben i think you called me out on not having a lot of structure and what what I would do is I would um, I would kind of have like a basic outline and then I would have cool things that I wanted to happen and I would write them down and I would try to I would try to kind of put them out there and a lot of I don't want to say a lot of yeah no a lot of a lot of the things that I wanted I would kind of put forth. And, my, like, you guys as players were not going along with them. And so, like, my my GM brain, like, my personal style of GMing, which, again, like, Ben and Alex have called me out on this. Um, but I, it's just it's just the way that I, I do things. I I feel like the the game is being played by the players. And so it's important that they're having fun. And so I shouldn't try to, like... Again, this is just my own personal like thing. You you I, you guys can do whatever you want, but like I shouldn't force them into doing anything that they don't want to do or that's less fun than something that they do want to do. So I was just kind of like throwing things out there to see how you guys would pick up on it and not picking up at it on it at all. <laughs> but I just kept throwing Jacob in there to be like, "Here's Jacob. Here's Jake. He's still here, guys. He's still yeah. here." And Alex was like, "No." Nah. Okay. No. Nah. To be fair. He just wasn't interested. That's one of the problems with the original series, too. And Alex, you fell into this trap, I think. Is they made this love triangle, but it was a foregone conclusion from the get-go that like Bella and Edward were gonna get together. Right. That's kind of how I was Yeah, yeah. And so I, into it. it really felt like Jacob was like never really there. Oh, but he was. Um mm. I mean, he could have been. Though. I know. 
Yes. He truly, like, if you guys wanted him, like, he would have hey, been there. I, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, like, I am not. You have I, opened up a can I, of worms. No. It's honestly, totally fine that he wasn't. I'm just letting you know, like, that's why Jacob kept hanging around. It wasn't because he was a vampire hunter. <laughs> Personally, I think, and uh, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit. We we had a problem with that particular episode with the, the coffee shop scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. Where Haley's audio completely Son vanished. Son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had to we had to redo that whole episode from me, Haley, mm-hmm. and Gen Z's part. And I feel like we did lose some. Stuff. We lost a lot of stuff in that original scene where I think I was a little bit more uh, flirty with uh with with, yeah. with Jacob. Yeah, you mm-hmm. were. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. It it happens. No, it's no, no, no it's, it's nobody's fault. fault at all. That one Not time that they didn't kick me off the podcast, <laughs> but they should have. No, no, it wasn't your fault. And then it was Zach's fault. And then the next time, <laughs> the next time that Jacob shows up, nobody knows who that is. Who that is. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Haley's husband's fault, but it's not Haley's husband's fault. Ooh. I'm just, Ooh. It's nobody's fault. But it was. But yeah, the next time that Jacob shows up. We're in like full panic mode because Edward's around, possibly, and so I had yeah. I had to get you know Jacob out of there so he would be you know okay. Well, see, in my mind, I I put him there, you know, as one as a way to get the baseball to you, mm-hmm. and two, like I thought you guys would just like bring him on in there so that you could protect <laughs> him, but that is not what happened at all. What, what, what <laughs> you happens? Know, this is fine. So then, you know, later on, I just used him as a, he got hypnotized, you know, which is, <laughs> which worked out great for me anyway, but. <laughs> but like every, every other thing that we'd seen, people that were around us kept getting hurt. So I figured get Jacob as far away as possible. That's true. No, I mean, it, it's good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I would say Gen C though. Uh, some people would look at your GM style and say that you don't railroad people. So that's, I mean, I think there's, I think that's pretty valid. I would really love to know, like, if you can think of any other times you dangled carrots in front of us and we just didn't see it. Oh my god! So, so <laughs> at any like, time you I... didn't want to leave the goddamn house. <laughs> oh, the bottle episode was definitely my fault. But at the same time, didn't <laughs> see like I needed something to happen. I couldn't just make it happen. <laughs> yeah. But, like, what? Like, tell me one. You had one, Jensi. What was it? Oh, just, like, just, I mean, honestly, there there were a lot of times. Anytime, um, specifically, I guess, in maybe the first episode or something, I kept trying to make, like, flirting at school happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made the... And yeah, and, and, and to be fair, you two kept talking about school. <laughs> we did. Yeah, right? I was like, But oh. you kept making the tardy bell ring. <laughs> Well, it's because you guys were just talking about I was trying to talk to him about it's baseball. Cool. I know. We can't, and you we st- can't just like go into it and be like, "Hey, uh, Bella, do you want to uh, bone down?" I then, I don't like, see why not. Lot, I don't see why not. We should like, have tried it, right? Seriously, but like in the parking lot, I was like, "Are you sure? Like, you're not gonna you're not gonna follow him? No, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna glare at him as he drives away. <laughs> okay, that's fine." I'm mean, like, I just. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't, it, that is totally what a moody teenager would do. <laughs> of course, absolutely, I agree. Very realistic. Here's my last big question for you, then. Um, what do you guys feel like the central message, what's, what's to be taken away from our version? Teenage romance is hard. Yeah, that was one of our issues. I feel like, I think I may have said this once, but one of the things I really took from it is that, like, uh, loving loving someone, or at least entering into a relationship with someone, means you have to accept some of their baggage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I, I also feel like, as we were doing this at like, um, uh, I have ADHD and ADHD is fairly common and it's honestly mm-hmm. pretty easy to deal with, but I am not neurotypical. Um, mm-hmm. a- as far as being neurotypical, it's one of the easier ones to deal with, I think, but I'm not neurotypical and vampirism is a lot like that 
is a lot like uh, mm-hmm. it's like a pretty good like metaphor for being like neuroatypical because people act like like people with uh, like autism and stuff like they have these like mental superpowers and like like in some ways it must be kind of cool to live with that and it's like you do have those but it kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's something that and, and people talk a lot about like. It's part of you and that's beautiful, but like I've never felt that. I have definitely dealt with Aww. it. I don't I don't hate it. Um, it is just part of me. But it's something that I've learned to deal with without stress a lot and like without too much struggle. But I would rather not have it. And so that's mm-hmm. what it felt like in in Twilight and this version of Twilight, what like being a vampire was like, where there was like, oh, you have cool superpowers, you can run around and stuff, but like Estella kind of would rather have not been a vampire. Yeah. Um I talk about that. Uh, John Green has a book he wrote, uh, I guess, last year called Turtles All the Way Down. Um, and he talks a lot. Like, that's kind of part of that story is that people talk like like that it's it's cool and romantic a lot of ways. And it's kind of not. Um, uh, and like, like that self-acceptance could be this like long, difficult road. And I like that we explore what it meant to be a partner that also has to go down that road and why it's worth doing that and and why it's hard to like accept that that's OK. And that the important Aww. part is wanting to accept it with them. Yes, you are valid and I accept you, Ben. I'm also a vampire. Um, <laughs> <gasps> I know. Um, I also like, uh, to that note, um, one of the things I really loved about Fate Core was that it forced us to decide all that stuff I just said from the get-go. Yeah. That we didn't just get thrown in. They said, no. You need to establish a theme for your story. And I, I kind of mm-hmm. used to think, um, like, there's a, a Pixar rule of storytelling that says you won't really know what a story is about until you're done writing it. And um, Stephen King has a book called Unwriting, where he also talks about that, that, like, you're not really going to know what your book is about. Or, like, that theme is, like, not a thing you can do uh, until you're done. Or that it reveals itself as you write. But I like that Fake Court was like, no, that's bullshit. Figure out your theme right now. <laughs> Figure out yeah. relationships are hard and vampires are real. Then do it. And like, I think honestly that improved it so much more than if we had just gone with like a Savage Worlds thing. Which like Savage Worlds worked really good for Indiana Jones, but I don't think it would have worked for this. And I think yeah. Fake Court was like a perfect, if you, hey, people at home, uh, for better or for worse, I don't know how you all felt so to, about this series, although some people have said some nice things. Thank you very much. But if you want to run a like Twilight game, you could do worse than Fake Core. Like Fake Core worked for this. Yeah. Um, it also made it kind of have. I'm going to talk about Final Fantasy VIII for a second because I love Final Fantasy VIII, even though do it. it's uh, kind of uh, the redheaded stepchild of uh, Square. Um, uh, it had this like really, really like uh, it was about romantic love. It had more of a theme like that than other Final Fantasy games did, and I think uh, I think that's why I love it so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like that. So that's what I think it's about. That's my big long answer to yeah. that. I mean, I, I I kind of I really agree with you on Fate Core. Like the whole time, I have no idea that we did the that i did it justice the system i don't know man i tried who knows if i did a good job or not probably not honestly and the whole time i was just praying that please god don't let anyone listen to this who's an expert on fake core cuz cuz i just didn't feel great about it i tried real hard though but i did really also like that they had uh they had us do the big issues right off the bat because that made gming like, that made my job easier because the whole time I had that to go off of, okay, like, is this following the the arc? Is this following the relationships are hard and vampires are real? These are issues. So. There was another thing that Fake Core really talked about when, like, Fake Core breaks it down into, like, campaign and then, like, series and... Like, I don't know. I'm just, like, thinking of it in terms of, like, series and episode kind of thing is how I was thinking of it. And for the the small thing, it was it was just like, okay, so you need a conflict and you need a smaller issue to go in on this. And then 
those are the things that you really have to have. And so that was good to, to keep myself organized because I was like, okay, as long as I can pick out these things and really try and guide them through these things, I think the whole thing will come together. It it what I'm saying is is that my like laissez faire <laughs> like GM style that complemented that well for me. Um there is a thing called uh fate accelerated, I think. Um mm -hmm. that's like a slightly simpler version of this. Um I think maybe if anyone felt like this was overwhelming, uh they might want to try that out. Check that out first. Um just I just learned that through the course of this. Just some advice. I don't know if it's actually good or bad. Um, yeah, all right. Um, what do you guys say we move into uh, move into uh, the submissions from uh, listeners? Yay, good idea! I edited these like just a little bitty bit, so if this doesn't sound exactly like you read it, I just did it so I edited it so that uh, just for time and clarity. So we got a lot of really good submissions. I always love it so much when the fans submit stuff. It makes me so happy. And especially this time, it made me very happy. So the first one that I am going to talk about is from Franz, my BFF from the Land Above podcast. And he writes, first of all, fucking wonderful. Great. I love it. Except, where the fuck was Jacob in that epilogue? Hello? You're going to abandon my boy? They're gay. Give me a weird polycule where the sequel is a romantic comedy about them trying to keep Jacob from finding out. Oh god, in the middle of writing this, I just remembered Jacob was literally attacked by Edward Finch. Never mind, he knows vampires exist. Okay, I would like to pause here. Oh, can I pause? Yes, you can pause. Or just, should I read the whole no, thing? No, you can pause. It's long, okay. so. Um, yes. <clears throat> I love this so much. Um, I... I, I don't remember if we kept it in there, but we we definitely did have the discussion. I, I asked, like, is Jacob there? And then Alex was like, nah, Jacob's not there. <laughs> so I feel like there wasn't enough chemistry between the two of them throughout the series. I'm sorry. Uh, to, it's no, my I'm, bad. I'm not, Alex, to Alex. I'm not trying to throw Alex under the bus. No, it's I'm, my I'm fault like, I'm validating my Alex. audio. No. That one time. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's nobody's ah! fault. Um, yeah, uh, to to uh, also to Alex's credit though, he did try to have like a cute scene with him where he like drops him back off at the house and he has a like yeah. maybe we'll see what the future holds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it didn't hold anything Nothing. and that's okay. <laughs> you know? It held it held this okay, where but... we where we point fingers at each other about why the the cool no. gay relationship didn't happen. <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers at Alex. I'm just saying that to Alex's credit, there wasn't the the chemistry wasn't there throughout the series. Like I get that. Like I wasn't gonna force it, and and I appreciate that he also wasn't trying to force it. Just cause. Oh, dag. But I think that's also like a reasonable thing for friends to say too. Oh yeah, I found my giant purple crayon. <laughs> yay! Yay! You guys have got to stop saying Good things job. without context. <laughs> <laughs> Never. He means his penis. I did mean my okay, penis. Okay, moving on. Yo, Jesus all right, Christ. So, the, <laughs> all right, so... Um, Franz uh, continues to write, The part with Madge had me freaking out. Fucking vampire! God damn it, Jensen, you're brilliant! Franz, I love you so much. The way Charlie was, like, semi with it? Still weird as fuck, but, like, actually competent? To a degree? Yeah, I love it. I think that might have been a compliment for me, too. Yes. Thank you. I love you, Franz. Okay, moving on. Franz also writes, Everyone was some degree of weird, and I feel like that's just how people work. How the fuck are you dealing with being a vampire or finding out they're real and being a teenager at the same time? Brad's mom just fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> also... <laughs> <laughs> also we don't talk about how that was charlie's ex-wife bro how's charlie doing about this see yeah how is charlie doing about this how is you charlie don't i don't shit, like charlie this. oh yeah oh see i was yeah. i was certainly never uh consulted on whether or not she should be dead well i guess you, <laughs> I mean, you, didn't, you didn't deal with it either you. yeah hmm I also sort of forgot that it happened recently. 
Oops. <laughs> the mother of your child just died. Okay. All right. Continuing. Um, and then he uh, continues to write, Now, the original Twilight. They aren't in high school. That's just fucking whack. College. They're at uni. Less weird about the whole thing. Bella meets Alice in women's studies course. They're lesbians. Yes! First of all, I fucking love Alice. Second of all, I love lesbians. Thirdly, I love this idea. I should have done this from the beginning. Uh, enough with the pseudo incest. I'm over it. What the hell? That is in all Let's caps. Let's not be racist and make... Yeah, that's... Yes. Let's not be racist and make the natives literal monsters. Goddamn. Yes, agreed. Like, that's a serious problem with the original. Come on, Stephanie Meyer. You can do better than that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read from Kellar. And I hope I'm saying that right. And also the Twitter name at Zalimbia. <laughs> That's what I said last time. Is that correct? <laughs> Twitter handles, man. Twitter handles. I don't know. At Zimbia. I don't know, but I'm going to follow you because I really like this, this submission. <clears throat> okay. Instead of saying how Twilight could be fixed, let me tell you the reason that I still feel that being a Twilight diehard as a teenager was worth it. And despite all its many, many flaws, I still like the series. That reason is Breaking Dawn Part 2. Here's the scenario. I'm in the theaters to see the movie. I've already read the book. It's a full theater. The movie gets to the final battle with the Volturi. Alice goes forward to talk to Aro. Aro tries to kidnap her. What the fuck? Sorry, that's a Haley insert. What the fuck? And Aro kills Carlisle. What the fuck? <laughs> Another Haley insert. I'm thinking I'm dreaming. Surely that wouldn't change the plot that much, right? Seth gets killed. Best boy, Seth. I'm pretty sure this is a prank, but they've... They, blah, 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 blah. But they haven't killed a main character yet. Bella and Edward charge forward to re take revenge, killing Aro. I'm here with you, Kellar. I am in this theater with you. And then Alice takes her hand away from Aro's. What we just saw was a vision of the future. The camera shows that no one is dead. I've never felt such a unity with the rest of the theater like I did in that moment. A hundred odd teenagers all breathing one big sigh of relief that our favorite series wasn't ruined in the penultimate movie. It was a breathtaking experience. Once again, thank you so much for this season. I can't wait to hear what you do next. I felt those em I felt those emotions in that theater with you, Kellar. I legit when I read this particular uh, email, uh, was like, "Holy shit! These are like huge spoilers." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Shit, Carlisle dies! Oh my god, who is Seth?" But this was like soul shattering moments in the theater. To only see Alice take her hand away from Aro, and it's like, oh, thank God! Oh, it was it was a very good moment. Yes, yes, I'm glad that Kalar submitted this. Um, Keller, Kalar, I maybe. Um, Kalar, maybe that's a good time to say, hey, uh, if you're worried about that, you should maybe send us a pronunciation <laughs> <laughs> just in the future. <laughs> All right, this one is from um, Eddie Jensen, uh, the uh, artist for the webcomic Grapple Seed. Uh, his is just a pitch for a whole movie uh, called Twilight Colon Home oh Run. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bella's baseball player for her high school baseball team. Uh, Jacob and her, too. Jacob and her grew up in Together in Forks. He is on a baseball team of a rival high school, but since teams are gendered, they are not direct rivals, but have a personal rivalry. They also have secret crushes on each other. Uh, number three, Edward is actually the one that moves into Forks, and he sucks. People try to defend him thinking he is shy, and he just shows no interest and only sits quietly in class. He's not cool, just painfully average. Four, Bella is in the middle of, like, a baseball season, like a league, uh, and her team are winning, and she's a big part of that. Uh, and so when Bella and Edward are assigned as lab partners, it plays out pretty much the same. Edward feels weirdly attracted to Bella, and she feels weirdly attracted to him. Uh, Edward more or less follows Bella home, talking to her the whole way, and she is mildly creeped out by this, but since she's into him, she thinks nothing of it. 
Okay. <laughs> he then... I'm not sure how that's how that works, but he... he he then notices Bella's uh, fascination with baseball and joins the baseball team. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. I <laughs> I kind of skimmed over this and I didn't see that part. Which leads to him absolutely obliterating Jacob while Bella watches from the stands. Uh, Bella, having never been able to beat Jacob in any aspect of baseball... Ugh, I don't like that. Sorry, Eddie, I don't like that. And becoming competitive uh, nature asks Edward for pointers. And this is when Edward reveals that he is a sparkly vampire. And this is also when he kisses her. Uh, that night, Bella wakes up to... Which she believes is Edward staring at her above her bed, but as she clears her eyes, he's gone, and she assumes it's just a dream. Ugh. Ugh. I know, I know, I don't like that Ugh. either. I'm sorry, Eddie. This is not better so far, Eddie. <laughs> I mean, it started out pretty good, but it got, it's not great right now. Um, <laughs> oh, there's so much more of this. The, the next morning, Jacob shows up at her door to take her to school, which is very unusual. In essence, he tells her he knows Edward is a vampire and to stay away from him. The rest of the movie plays out pretty similar, except with interstitial baseball matches. Like, I, this is one thing that Eddie kind of just told me in private, is he was like, uh, lots of baseball, please. And like, okay. to be fair, it was like kind of the best part of the original movie. I remember watching the movie when, the baseball it, scene was when it came out, and I was like, well, no, this is a good idea. Um Edward is creepy as fuck, and Bella tries to ignore it. She plays baseball with his cool vampire family. It's dope. Edward keeps getting consistently more possessive and creepy, and Bella is less and less into it. She starts trying to avoid him, but he always finds her. He decides what she wears, who she talks to, etc. And the last straw for Bella is when he tells her she shouldn't play baseball anymore. Told you, Edward sucks. Yeah, this is, for this now. This is, for this it. is the finale of the season. Uh, he tells Bella not to play, and when she refuses, he is about to get violent, and Jacob intervenes, causing Edward to walk away. Mm, okay, now I'm getting this. Uh, be- getting into this, yeah, I know, right? Bella has been avoiding Jacob at Edward's request, and Jacob is sick of it. Bella comes clean, and they both devise a plan on how to get Thank rid you. of Edward. Vampires are bound to promises, so they decide to make a deal with Edward one last baseball game. They win. Edward leaves town and never talks to Bella again. If Edward wins, Bella will do anything he says. And thus we end up in the climax. Edward and the vampires versus Bella. Jacob and the rest of Bella's team. Bella, of course, wins, and Edward lashes out. He tries to attack her, but is stopped by Carlisle, who is a traditional vampire, and demands Edward adhere to the rules. It ends with Jacob asking Bella out on a date, and Bella rejecting him, and she's going to focus on her baseball career. If you're asking why it's not revealed that Jacob is a werewolf, that's for the sequel. Maybe his eyes glow yellow at the end thriller style. <laughs> so nice. at least one person liked the, the werewolf stuff. I don't know. Actually, okay. you know what? You lost me, and then you got me back, Eddie. <laughs> He was making him creep. He was making creep on purpose. I didn't get that. That was a roller coaster. It was a roller really coaster. Was. Was it was great. amazing. Dang. I would watch these the people are just so imaginative. Goodness. I feel like when we did Indiana Jones, I was like, "Ooh, I want more of these top to bottom pitches." And like, I kind of monkey's pawed that a little bit. I kind of monkey's pawed <laughs> that. We got these like like four essays in. So, uh, Alex, I think you got a few here that are a little shorter. Yeah, right. short is sweet, especially because I'm a little sick, oh, so no. my voice is not going to be oh, as strong no. as it needs. Every one of this podcast is a little sick right now. <laughs> All right, my first one is from Kim uh, from the Chaotic Goodness podcast. Uh, she says, in all honesty, I like the movies better uh, because I didn't have to read the whiny bits about how boring Bella was and how perfect Edward was ten times per page. I think she was talking from between the movie and the book. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, she she wasn't talking about our uh, podcast, especially since. Oh, oh yeah, I think this was in response to me <clears throat> uh, asking for some thoughts on the original. Work. Yeah. So Kim, always a fan, my best friend, definitely not Jensie's. Uh. I don't really have one. I guess it's Eddie. It's yeah. Eddie. Oh, yeah. You and Eddie are... Okay, yeah, this is fine. Super friends. Uh, this wasn't officially sent in as a rehash, but uh, Jason Danger of the Incredibly Daring podcast uh, suggested that we should have named the Forks newspaper, or the Spoons nope. newspaper, yeah. forgive me, Two Scoops, which is, <laughs> which is very <laughs> good. Did we actually name that. the newspaper in Spoons? No, no, Spoons is... Spoons existed only as a joke, and all of its people are but yeah. the punchline. Their all lives right. fleeting and meaningless. I'm a, I'm gonna need your help on this one, Sarah Swinson, Swinson Carlson, uh, from Facebook. Um, looks like they're just dunking on the original movie here. I 
the car scene exclamation point where Edward saves Bella from those guys and they're driving away. Uh, you can tell the car is barely moving and she just, uh, she says to put on uh, your seatbelt question mark exclamation point. The ab living was terrible and the blonde dye job for Rosalie Rosalie was awful. Uh, <clears throat> she would have looked better with dark hair fixed by the roots. Fixed Those are good. Roots. Yeah. So let me just bang. Oh, wait. Oh, what's up? Nick, Nick, Nick made a comment on the Facebook post. Oh, yeah? He What'd did. that rascal say? Is this a Blossius? That. Yeah, it's one of those damn Blossii. Oh, Blossiuses. Blossiuses? We, we, we like Blossii. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. Continue. Um, Nick said... I think the series was spectacular. 10 Aww. out of 10. Well, that's just, Thank that's you, not Nick. a rehash, Jensen. That's just him telling us <laughs> that we're awesome. He commented on, he was the only comment on the on the rehash thing that I sent out on Facebook, okay? So it was a rehash thing. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate you, even if Ben doesn't think I should read your comment on the you air. You did it, Nick. We, we appreciate you. Yeah. Okay, no, sorry, this is just me. about you wanting to read people loving you out loud. So are the... Are the <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about people, uh, speaking about people loving us out loud, let's talk about our Patreon. Woo! Oh, Patreon. and how people love us out loud with their uh, with their money. Take my money. So nice. Give me stickers. <laughs> I love like most people Woo! with Patreons kind of like dance around it that they're like, "Hey, every dollar you give us like helps us out," and you're like, "You're like, it's about the money, baby. <laughs> it's about the money and how much you love us by giving us more money." I'm just kidding. But I'm not. Oh, but I am. We truly. But we no, actually, that. honestly, that that is the truth of it. <laughs> I mean, hey, the money keeps us going. It, it helps us buy better equipment for for those of us who need it. It helps us uh, arrange things like uh, music and um, uh, fan art and 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 other things like that. Maybe not fan fart, art, but fart, like yes, official art. I should suppose. The, to commission people to help us. <laughs> commission the yeah. people to help yeah. us. That's the word. Because exposure doesn't feed. That is true. Them, so we want to pay people who do stuff for us. That's right. Or you're married to us or something and you're mostly obligated to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we pay them with other things. <laughs> oh! What, we need to talk about the tiers, I think. We need to say what... Um, yeah, uh, for the Patreon. Um, The the uh, the base tier, if you just, if you just can throw us... Um, we know that like not everyone's always got just tons of money, but um, if you could just even just like give us a dollar a month, um, you can get into a uh, special part of our Discord uh, called the Producers Lounge. Everyone that uh, uh, donates to the pa- Patreon becomes a producer. That's right. Um, also, you'll get some access to some stuff on Patreon. Like uh, right now, there's some my notes from the Batman and Robin arc are up there, and everyone that's a patron can see that. A producer can see that. Yeah, I'm currently gathering all my notes for the uh, ba- the uh, Indiana Jones uh, thing. I found some more that were on my phone still that I haven't deleted yet. I'm going to send those out. Um, the next level, there, there's a, f- a $5 level where um, you can get access to some bonus episodes, um, including uh, some like deleted scenes reels from our series. Um, and some gag and, uh, reels. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little bit of bloopers. Um, and uh, the, the these guys will tell you, um, I edit pretty, pretty liberally. He's, I, got, uh, he's got a strong uh, cutting hand. Uh, so honestly, there's like some good stuff that I cut out just because I was like, nope, it's distracting. The, the, the <laughs> floor is just littered with with clips. So uh, th- yeah, there's one that's about uh, up right now. It's about ten minutes long, and I have twenty minutes more material to do as we go along. So just from just from Twilight. So uh, if you go up to the seven dollar uh, tier, you'll get some stickers. 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 Play on stickers. And put them on stuff you like. Which, by the way, Haley Haley did that. Haley got some stickers because they're a patron. Stickers. <laughs> stickers. I I've got I've got uh, a load of stickers ready to go. I'm also handwriting a, a little appreciation note for every person who gets uh, gets that level, and I'm doing a little doing a little. Uh, doodle on on your on your little handwritten note, and they're from 
my uh, my very own personal Grail diary that I have. That's not the penises you've been talking about drawing, is it? it there is one penis on one of these uh, one of these drawings. We're gonna see who got it. <laughs> Just sort of a roulette. Just sort a, of a roulette a, thing. A penis roulette. Um. <laughs> <laughs> And the the top tier, the top tier, the ten dollar tier, the the I believe we call them executive producers. They get to make us say anything during these segments. Uh, they're usually in the mid roll. They're usually in the middle of the episode, but for this one, it's at the end. But um, once a month, you get to make us say anything that's not you know terrible. I mean, but you'd be surprised what we'll say. Uh, up to two hundred fifty characters, which is a lot. That's like twenty words, which is like an eternity on a podcast. Um and so uh Jinsi, you wanna uh you wanna read the ones we've got from our um from our executive producers this month? Yes. Okay. Ben Blasius uh he said you only live once, so make the most of life. Live authentically, love deeply, and remember to enjoy the journey. That was beautiful, Ben. Just a sweet boy. Thank you for that. It was. I was I really, really so expecting great. people to like make us say super embarrassing stuff, and then here comes Ben Blasius with something like poetic. Oh, God. <laughs> so That's what they do. He's just using this platform to, to spread as much love and positivity as he can, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Ben. Um, so, uh, the next thing is kind of weird. So, friends, we kept asking friends, what you want us to say, friends? And he never really asked us to say anything, uh, but... That's actually not... Keller, that's not true. Uh, is it not? What? Franz got one under the buzzer. He uh, got one under the buzzer! Ah, so what is it? He wanted, he wanted us to say that Franz says he loves us. Aww, yay! That means we can't read this other thing. We love him too. No, we can still that, do that because we're, 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 we we haven't reached the character limit yet. So that's fair. We, we can re- roll re- that re- together. Okay. okay. To continue to continue off of that, then the that uh, Franz loves us. Um, we we also wanted to make a very rare exception because one of the other submissions said, "Hey, could you read this on the air to Franz?" And we're like, "No, nah, man, that's a producer level thing." But since Franz is was so sure, we're going to read it anyway. Also, because it's really cute. We just really want to read it because it's super cute. No, that is anyway, not why. Says, we are not going to read things just because they're cute. Oh, no, we're definitely not. Will it kill you? That. Will it That's kill you to do definitely so? Not. I don't think so. Anyway. That's definitely, said, that's definitely saying, what's happening. Weird. I mean, that's definitely what's it's happening. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, just wait. Just wait, guys. Okay, anyway. Keller says uh, to Franz. Hey, babe, I'm over the moon for you. Thank you for showing me this podcast, and I can't wait to see you at Candle Nights. Love, Keller. Mm. I don't know what this this Candle Nights business is. What's Candle Nights? Some other, from some other, no. Better not be something from some other podcast. Is it Keller? I think. Keller? I think it is. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't know, Keller. Um. Anyway, it's cute. I also think. I just just to be just to be the turn in the punch bowl here, I think it's absolutely <laughs> hysterical that like Keller sends uh their partner this like love lovely mess lovely message and then their partner <laughs> tells us that they love us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me personally. Yeah, <laughs> we are that meme. We're that meme. We're like we're like the whistling. Hey, yeah, we're, we're the we're the thing the person we're, is whistling at that's instead right. of mm-hmm. we're we're the 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 Perfect. guy man person. <laughs> we're the, well, no, we're the other lady. Oh, no, we're the other girl. Yeah, we're, the well, other I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're foreground lady. lady. Uh, Franz, Franz is, is the guy. guy. The guy. Yeah. I got I got so boy, another one. <laughs> explaining memes out loud is not easy, huh? No, no. <laughs> I got another one hot off the press uh, from uh, Nick. Nick Blossy has finally got finally got one to me. He wanted me to say that Rookie D is a bastard. <laughs> oh no! I got so excited. I thought he had finally found his shiny. Uh, that is all he said to me. I don't know I what half of it means. Completely, 
don't know what okay, any of that been, means, including shiny. He's been trying shiny. to find this shiny. He's already gotten like over 200 of them. It's a Pokemon thing. We're talking about He's already Pokemon. gotten like two, over 200 of them. And I thought that this was him saying, but never mind. No. Have I ever told what? the story on this podcast about me overhearing someone at college saying, uh, like a few, like my second time through college, saying, uh, he's really the beefiest psychic. And it taking me like all day to figure out that they were talking about Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> the beefiest psychic. I love it. All right. Uh, here we go. Thanks some people for talking about us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, hopefully I'm, uh, not leaving anybody out uh if you had rehash submissions and we didn't get to them i'm sorry but uh shout outs to kim from chaotic goodness podcast uh nico of the hostile takeover podcast kent's blue of the roll to play podcast at unofficial mine on twitter uh, if you talk about us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, we'll give you a shout out too. Uh, just use the hashtag Roleplay Retcon in your uh, tweets, post, or um, whatever the hell they do on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> you run the Instagram. Why do you not? It doesn't that? mean I know what they do. They p- also p- pictures things. Yeah, that yeah. I, I do it daily. Uh, if you add us, that's okay. I'm still going to thank you. But honestly, adding us like re- like reduces the visibility. It True. like kind of makes it so that um, we're kind of the only ones who do see it. Um, that hashtag really helps us out. But it's always appreciated, no matter what you do. If you like can't remember what it was, just do one or the other, and we'll love you anyway. Yeah, we'll we'll love you, and uh, I will give you a high five next time I see you. If you do neither, I won't see it though. <laughs> that is true. If you're just like, you know, it's pretty good, that one podcast where they redo the movies. I don't remember what it's called. Like, I'm not going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are... Uh, this oh, this was... Thank you for listening to Roleplay Rehash. If this was your first series, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really yeah. hope you enjoyed uh, it. If, if you do enjoy it, uh, please go listen to some other series. Um, I... I have a little like disclaimer before Batman and Robin that says like don't listen to this one first, but I think you're ready now if you've listened to all of uh, Twilight. You're ready I think for you'll it. be able to. You've, to, you've to, earned you, Batman and Robin. There's good stuff in it, and you'll forgive the missteps. I think at this point, um, that will just not listen to us ever again. Like these guys are awful. Well, actually, I think Indiana Jones turned out pretty good too. So yeah. maybe go listen to that one. Uh, Indiana Jones was amazing. Yeah, Indiana Jones is very good. Um, we we need to do our final thank you to the Wolves of Chernobyl. Please, please buy their album, uh, Eschatologies. Um, we are going to be doing uh, some new, some new things over the next few weeks. Um, we will not, we're not abandoning this format. We're going to return probably after in the in the new, the new year with like a new big uh, series that takes place over like five to seven episodes. Um, but uh, next, the next episode we're going to do is going to do like a one episode thing. Um, that's kind of going to be our holiday special. Um, we'll explain more thoroughly in that episode, but the movie we're doing is the Santa Claus three in case you want to watch it before (laughs) that episode, uh, lands. Um, and then after that, we're going to do a short series where we remake a movie using fiasco, but fiasco games don't last as long as like other RPGs. So I'm only expecting that to be like a, like three or four episodes long. Yeah. It should be on like two hours. Yeah. Um, but I'm still excited about that. Yeah. Me too. Um, uh, by the way, uh, Mona, my sister, and the person who was uh, in Indiana Jones, if you've listened to that or are going to listen to that, um, if, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't have started with Mona. I should have started by talking about Wannabe Games, who has uh, talked us up some. We talked about them on the show some. Uh, they're doing a Kickstarter for a, an RPG called Moonpunk. And when this episode airs, I think there'll be a couple of days left in that Kickstarter. Um, their next stretch goal as of this recording, uh, will get Mona on board to do art for the, for the game. Fuck yeah. Uh, if you want to know a little more about Mona, um, you can read our webcomic, dannesnowman.com. That's kind of where the bulk of their artwork is. Um, uh, I don't know. I've backed Moonpunk. I don't know a lot about Moonpunk <laughs> aside from it is like a punk like anti-fascist like story like punk with a punk aesthetic on the moon um and it's a power by the apocalypse game um yeah heck yeah um 
that's all I got. I think we did it. Okay, so before we end, though, we have to we have to say goodbye to Haley on. Bye. Yeah. So Haley, I'm so happy that you got to do this podcast Aww. with us. Oh, uh, I love you Aww, so much. I love you too. <laughs> and I and I loved having you on the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so you sorry. I was this. so fucking terrible. No. no. I drink a lot of wine. Did you guys know? You probably knew. <laughs> we, we did. We did talk about it a few times. Yeah. Like, damn. <laughs> You, it is, it has been a treat and a pleasure having you on the podcast. Yay! It, oh, I want to say congratulations. Now that we're at the end of this, the last Twilight thing, congratulations to all four of us for not making a vampire suck joke. We didn't do it. We got through it. Whoa. We told every nice. other bad vampire joke, but we didn't do that one. And Go us. Good for wow. us. Bottom 10%. We did it. Not 0%, bottom 10%. That's impressive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, kisses. Bye, kisses. In other news, it appears that Marsh Haven is on the up, as those good eggs over at Mondo Corps have done it again by announcing an Hello. 150 new jobs once they open the doors to the Phoenix Plaza. Hello. Various boutiques and offices, the plaza boasts a new exhibition space, yeah. famous Pete Mummy, and a much-needed cash injection into local secondary school, Anna Kingsford College. Hello. Look, if you can hear this, then maybe all is not lost. Marsh Haven is not the place that you think it is. It has secrets, and there doesn't seem to be a sane adult in a hundred miles of the place who wants to know. Look, just spread the word. The kids are doing the best they can, but the country needs to know. The world needs to know that... Brits on Bikes is an actual play podcast powered by the Kids on Bikes RPG. Listen on your preferred podcatcher... And follow us on Twitter at Brits underscore bikes. Keep on biking.